How's everybody doing today? And it's your boy Buzz HD. And if you're new to this channel, welcome to Buzz HD. Real quick, I just want to tell you guys that thank you so much for the support you guys have been showing me. This channel went from, you know, just having like just 300 subscribers to having like a thousand subscribers in like in about like six weeks. I mean, you guys are just so amazing. Thank you guys so much for the support you guys have been showing me. If you guys actually don't know, I'm actually a rapper. And uh, I think I'm fairly decent. So if you guys want to check my, uh, you want to check my songs out, it's gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna put it somewhere over here. So if you guys want to check that out, you can go ahead and check that out. I actually dropped a video today. It's a, it's a music video. It's called Put On, and uh, I think it's fairly decent. If you guys want to check it out, it's gonna be here too. So I'll put it over there. You know, I'll put it somewhere over there. So today I'm gonna be making, uh, making a reaction video about four true college horror stories. Um, it's gonna be scary. And I, and I, I really know you guys. You guys like all that scary shit. You know, you like all that scary videos and stuff I be doing. And um, thank you guys so much again for the, you know, the support. You know, without further ado, let's get to the video. Okay. And this time, I'm gonna shut the fuck up when the video is playing. Story number one. It was my first year of university. I had just finished unpacking all of my stuff into my room, and my family had just left. Later on that same day, my roommate finally arrived, and right from the get-go, I knew this kid was the most socially inept person I'd ever met. I introduced myself as Dan, staking out my arm for a handshake. He paused, looked down at my arm as if he didn't understand at first, then laughed and went, oh, and gave me an almost dead fish handshake. I had to ask him for his name since he didn't even tell me when we shook hands. He was Dale. I tried to make small talk, but he just answered my questions with yes or no's, occasionally awkwardly laughing or smiling. Within minutes, we were both just sitting on our beds, on our laptops, not talking to each other. I was upset and planned on requesting to be placed with a different roommate. Anyone would be better than Dale. I thought Dale was just a really awkward kid, but I soon learned he was much more than just that. I met some of the other kids on my floor and they seemed cool, so that was good. I came back to my dorm after looking around campus the first night to find Dale still in the same position he was in when I left. I said, what's up Dale? And he didn't answer. Not to my surprise. It was 9.30, I didn't have anything to do, so I turned out the lamp on my side of the room and went to bed. I didn't actually fall asleep anytime soon though. Dale was on his laptop until 3 in the morning. When he finally closed his laptop, I fell asleep pretty quickly, but I woke up within the hour. The blinds to our room had been opened, and the moonlight now creeping into the room made everything visible, including Dale sitting on the side of his bed, looking at me. I sat up, rubbed my eyes, and said, Dale, what, what the hell are you doing? He whispered back, sorry, and laid down. The next morning, I woke up to find Dale had already gotten up. I felt like it was the first time he left the room. It was a Saturday. The first Saturday of the year, meaning orientation and all the campus festivities. During the orientation, as my group was walking by the school gardens, I heard a couple of students ahead of me saying, What is that kid doing in there? I saw who they were talking about. It was Dale, literally sitting in the dirt behind a patch of bushes, rubbing the bark of a tree with his hand. The orientation leader didn't notice, otherwise I'm sure she would have said something. I just walked by not saying anything, eventually telling the two kids I overheard that he was my roommate as a way to start a conversation and maybe make some friends. They apologized for me. None of us really knew if it was appropriate to laugh or not, but we did. I made friends with those two kids, and we made plans to get together that night. I also learned when I got back to my dorm that the school found another roommate for me. Things seemed to be turning around quickly for the better. I left the room that night to go meet up with the two kids I met, and when I got back, Dale was sitting on the desk chair facing the door. I said, oh, hey, what's up? He said nothing, very matter-of-factly. I sat down on my bed and opened my laptop, and realized I forgot to lock it. I also realized that all of my emails had been opened, emails I was pretty sure I didn't even read, and a bunch of folders of mine had been opened. Dale must have snooped through my laptop. 
When I asked him if he did, he responded no very loudly half a second after I even finished my question. I could read him like a book. This creepy kid was literally going through my computer when I was out. I knew he did it, but I didn't pursue it. I was ready to go to bed, so as I went into my bed to look for my pajamas, I felt like my clothing had all been moved around as well. I knew I'd be out of there forever by tomorrow, so I didn't say anything. I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of a zipper. I sat up and saw Dale on the ground, going through my bag. I turned the lamp on, this time confronting him about it. He played dumb, saying, I think you have my toothbrush by mistake. It was the closest thing to wits that he'd shown up until that point. Still, I knew he was lying, and I knew something was wrong with him, so I couldn't get physical with him. The next day, I met my new roommate in the same building, and everything went well. Sunday night, after having a decent conversation with my roommate, who was no social butterfly, but was miles better than Dale, we both turned off our lights and went to bed. For the third night in a row, I woke up at some off hour of the night to a strange noise. It was a weird clicking noise. It wasn't consistent, but I'd hear it at least twice every 30 seconds. I got up, hoping to find something innocent, like a heavy bag putting pressure on a weak floorboard, or even a mouse. But as I scoped out the room, I realized the sound was actually coming from the other side of the door. The nightlight in the common area was always on, so when I looked through the peephole, I was able to see the scalp of the person standing on the other side of our door. They were looking down, so I couldn't see their face, but now that I was paying attention, I realized the tiny clicking noises were actually coming from the doorknob. I was sure the person was trying to unlock the door. I dialed the number for the campus police department, and they showed up in under five minutes to the common room, and only then did I feel it was safe to open the door. I found the officers to have Dale in cuffs. I had a feeling it was him. I told them everything, that he was my former roommate who was going through my stuff, so I switched dorms, only to find him trying to break into my new dorm. Damn. They took him away, I don't know what happened to him after that, but I never saw him again. He either got suspended for the semester or expelled. I got through the rest of my years at university like anybody else. However, the nightmarish experience I had with Dale still pops up in my head every now and then. Shit, I'll be scared too. <laughs> Damn. How y'all doing today? I went to Binghamton University for two years. I quickly made a big group of friends there and we'd go out every weekend. One weekend on a Friday night in October when my group didn't have any big plans together, me and two other close friends decided to hang out in the school nature preserve by the lake. There was this little clearing on the far side of the lake that was convenient for fires. Since it was so far from view of the school or campus security, kids would sometimes, but not often, come here to smoke pot, drink, and do basically all the other drugs. It was a relatively unknown spot on campus by most, and we liked that about it. Tonight we just brought a bunch of beers, lit a fire, and hung out, having what we referred to at the time as a bro chat. As the night progressed, time seemed to pass quicker as the alcohol began to take effect. Eventually it got to the point where we were all laughing so hard that one of my two friends was on the floor rolling in the leaves. That was when my other friend stopped laughing and went, shh. We all perked up and listened, and heard the crunching of leaves and branches in the distance. We threw our bottles in the lake since we were all under 21, and it wasn't unheard of for campus police to come through the woods on weekends to catch kids doing drugs. We tucked the rest of the beers into a backpack. I was moderately drunk, so my paranoia was higher than usual. That was probably the case for all of us. The fire exposed us to anyone passing through the woods. But the thing is, this spot was so unknown and far from campus that it was rare to find anybody else that deep into the woods. It sounded like just one person in the distance. The sound of a tree branch snapping not too far away freaked all of us out. None of us were really the confrontational ones from our group, so we were lacking that one person who would have the confidence to stand up and yell out to whoever was out there. Instead, we all just sat in silence, shushing each other. We heard what seemed to be somebody or something circling us or at least walking around in a C-shape around our little campsite. 
it literally started to feel like we were in the movie The Blair Witch Project. Because these sounds in the near distance, like cracking tree branches and leaves crunching on the ground, kept echoing over to our campsite. We laughed about it at first, but I personally soon became terrified of who or what it could be. Out of the blue, a huge thud made all three of us jump. At first I didn't understand, even though I saw what caused the sound. It took me a few seconds to digest the fact that a branch had been thrown into the center of our little fire site. One of my two friends took off running, while my other friend and I sat behind, looking at each other, half laughing, half concerned. I feel like we didn't know yet if this was some kind of joke or not. Then, my friend let out a scream of pain, as he was struck in the face by another tree branch. I grabbed the backpack, helped my friend up off the floor, and we hauled ass back in the direction of our dorm. When we made it to the road separating the nature preserve from our dorm, we stopped to catch our breath. But whoever was out there proved to be following us when we heard footsteps coming closer to the road. We continued to run back to the dorm, and when we got back to our floor, we found our other friend in his room already. We looked out of his room window down to the woods. There was someone pacing back and forth by the woods, and every time a car passed, they would walk back into the woods. Eventually, whoever it was went back into the woods for good, to never be seen again by us. We continued our drinking session in the dorm room, and within 10 minutes, we were all laughing about it. It wasn't until the next morning that we all realized how terrifying that experience actually was. We never really went back into the woods past dark after that. How the fuck are these motherfuckers still drinking? Nigga, if I was, if I was a motherfucker, I would get the fuck out of there, like, straight up, I'm, getting, I'm running my ass home, shit. This takes place during the first week of school, my freshman year at the University of Iowa. I was just starting to get comfortable with my roommate. He was dedicated to the idea of rushing a fraternity, and rush week was starting the next week, but the parties were starting Thursday of the first week. My roommate didn't want to go alone because it would be harder to meet people that way, so he wanted me to go. I happily agreed to go with him. Even though I had no interest in rushing a fraternity, I still had intentions to go to parties. After all, I was attending a party school. My roommate wanted to go to one frat party on Thursday, and then parties at different frat houses on Friday and Saturday. On this Thursday night, we were headed to perhaps one of the lowest ranked frats. I'm pretty sure it was an underground one too. But his logic in attending was to have a backup frat in case the higher ones wouldn't give him a bid. The frat house was really far from campus, in a much more slummy downtown area. We pulled up to a corner house, and if it weren't for the blasting music and cars parked everywhere, we would never picture this house as a frat house. It literally looked like they settled with the first house they found. We knocked on the door to immediately be greeted by some short chubby guy in a white t-shirt holding a solo cup. His shirt had sweat stains by his armpits and mid-belly area. He told us to come right in. The party itself was in a horribly dimly lit room, with probably 50 guys bunched up into the living room. It was hot as hell in there to make it even worse. I think I saw maybe two girls at the entire party, neither of them even close to attractive. I gave the party a good 20 minutes, talking with one overweight foreigner after another, all giving off antisocial vibes. Eventually, I waved for my roommate to get ready to leave, but a huge group of guys by the door made us decide to wait a little longer to avoid the awkwardness of leaving early. I continued to drink the cheap beers they were serving. I think I downed five cups before I could even feel the buzz. A heavy guy approached me with a tiny bottle in his hand and handed it to me, smirking and saying, that'll get you shit-faced. I fake laughed and thanked him, expecting him to go away but he just watched me as if he were waiting for me to drink it. So, I did. It was maybe two shots worth of some kind of hard liquor. The guy then started making conversation with me, and every time I hinted that I was trying to get away, he would try to pull me further into this otherwise one-sided conversation. Things started to get really blurry pretty soon. I remember feeling dizzy all of a sudden, and the room seemed to be getting darker. That was the last thing I remember before waking up in a dark room, laying in a bed. Oh, hell no. I could hear the sound of music muffled behind closed doors, so I knew I was still in the frat house. It was a very dark room, however I could still make out certain furniture in the room, and a small closet door, not much else though. 
but even over the blaring music, I heard the sound of a plastic bag being crunched from the closet, as if somebody had stepped on it by mistake. I ran out of that room and down the stairs back to the overcrowded living room. I found my roommate and pushed him out the front door, past the group of guys still standing in a circle right next to it. During the car ride back to campus, I told my roommate I was drugged. He almost called the cops, but I said it would be foolish and pointless. My roommate then asked me an awkward question. Was I taken oh, advantage of? What the fuck? I didn't feel any type of pain, and my clothes were all still on the same, so I assumed not. When I did a time check, I realized I'd only been out for maybe 10 minutes before waking up. Still. Whatever the guy gave me must have been a dud or something, thank God. That was my college experience of attending an underground ghetto frat party, and it remains to be my scariest life experience. I had a single dorm my first semester of sophomore year. It was in the corner of the floor, kind of secluded from the rest of the dorm rooms, since it was in its own little section. You had to turn a corner to even see the door. It was nice because I'd be able to still talk with friends on my floor, invite people over to my room, and still have privacy when it was time to do homework or go to sleep. A few weeks into the semester, while studying for a bio exam, the silence was interrupted by a noise. It took me a bit to realize it was a light tapping on the door. It was so light that I almost didn't even hear it. I yelled come in, but the door didn't open, so I got up to open it. Nobody was there. I walked around the corner to look down the hall. Nobody. Somebody was obviously messing with me. I went back to my bed and continued studying, this time leaving the door open. Nobody came back. The next night, a few minutes after shutting the lamp in my bedroom to go to bed, the tapping on the door returned, only this time it was much louder, more of a knocking sound. I called out who is it, and again the knocking stopped and nobody answered. I got out of my bed quickly and opened the door to see my small private corridor was void of any people. Again I ran the ten feet from my door to the corner to look down the main hallway of the floor. Nobody. The next morning, I asked some of the other kids in the dorm if they had been messing with me. Everyone said no. The next night, I woke up after having been asleep for three hours. Someone was knocking on my door again, this time louder than ever. I had trouble deciding whether to open the door or not this time. With a bout of courage, I hopped up and opened the door. Nobody was there as I was expecting. But this time, I full-on sprinted down the tiny corridor isolating my room. And when I turned the corner, I saw the back of somebody disappearing behind the far corner on the opposite side of the hallway. I ran as fast as I could down the hallway, and as I turned to the next hallway where I saw the person a few seconds earlier, I saw a door at the end of the hallway shutting. It wasn't a dorm room, it was a bathroom. I felt like I was ready to confront whoever this joker was, so I pushed open the bathroom door with force. The light was off. I turned it on expecting to see somebody hiding in there, but I didn't see anyone. My first instinct was to check the two bathroom stalls which were both shut. I got on my hands and knees and looked under the two stalls. Two heavy black boots could be seen from underneath one of the stall doors. I took a deep breath and pushed the stall open. I was confused. There were the boots sitting on the floor, but no person to wear them. And then, I heard a creepy giggling noise. <laughs> Not a feminine or childlike one. It was a kind of laughing that I could only imagine to be that of a really old crazy man. For some reason, my confidence was gone and I was scared shitless. Therefore, I ran back to my room and shut the door. I hopped back in my bed and started texting every friend I had. Of course, everybody was asleep though. The knocking happened one more time that night. I ignored it. It went on for about 30 seconds before whoever that person was finally gave up. I spoke to everybody on my floor the next day. Nobody else heard any knocking and everybody swore they weren't pranking me. Everybody seemed sincere. I don't know why this person chose to harass me or who this person was. Judging by the boots and the laughing I heard, this was an older man though and that disturbs me. 
fucking crazy, man. And that is the end of the video today. If you guys like this video and enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like down below. Share this video. You know, tell everybody about this video. And guys, like always, man, thank you so much for the support you guys have been showing me. I mean, it's just, it's so crazy. And, you know, all the people that subscribe to the channel, thank you guys so much. I'm going to have like a like a reward or some shit like that. I don't know, maybe like an Amazon gift card or something like that. And then, you know, I don't know, maybe in two, three weeks time. And I'll try to, I'll try to like give you guys and stuff like that. And um, like always, thank you guys so much for, you know, for the support. Your original video is going to be in the description down below. So if you guys want to check that out, go ahead and check that out. And um, guys, guys, don't forget about my music. I'm going to put it somewhere there. You guys can check it out. You, 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 can, you can go to my SoundCloud where you can actually watch the music video I just dropped today. It's going to be on my channel. And guys, thank you so much for the support. I'll see you guys later. You guys have a nice day. Have a wonderful day. And peace.